talk about courtesy of the BBC regarding the bed bugs, bed bugs, sorry, panic that's sweeping flipping Paris. Absolutely wild. It's been pretty interesting to see and to read accounts from people online about just how traumatic and how much PTSD people have from having bed bugs. And I thought I was the only person. I thought only I was traumatically scarred by having bed bugs. Like I had it twice. Right, twice, yeah. I had it once when I was living at home and once when I moved out. And both occasions were, especially when I was living at home, I think it was mostly a reminder about just how hard I needed to work to kind of change my circumstances and obviously help my family and obviously help myself to kind of get out of that situation and kind of pull my, you know, help pull my family out of the flipping depths of poverty because I grew up in a fucking horrible neighborhood and, you know, not didn't have the most money in the world. But it also reminded me of just how quickly <laughs> little things can turn into big things because usually bed bugs especially from my neighborhood growing up it's just mostly just you know a, a build up of dirt and stuff and just lack of hygiene and all sorts of other things that's happening especially in the area that i live in with you know bin men going on strike and stuff and bins piling up all over the street and bloody blah 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 sanitary hygiene all that stuff can add to it and it just reminds you again it's just a very big humbler as to where you are currently at and where you need to go to avoid those situations but the experience of having bed bugs never leaves you and i remember one particular occasion when i had bed bugs and i remember i think i was working at the time at dr Myers or something and i was talking to a, a, a customer on the shop floor and i think i noticed before they noticed it but i was wearing like a flannel shirt and i saw a fucking bed bug bed bug sorry creep crawling out of my flipping flannel shirt pocket my chest pocket i saw it creeping out of my chest pocket like that and i quickly was able to kind of pat it away without them realizing but i was like oh my god i've got bed bugs on my clothes bro i'm transporting them from my home all the way to fucking central london where i was working at i was like oh my god i have to change my circle that's when i went whatever i got flipping people to come over fumigation that whole thing which cost an arm and a leg but jesus christ i remember that just being one of the times where i felt so utterly disgusting i can't even begin to you know describe but just imagine how crazy it must be living in paris right gay paris um this beautiful place all your dreams and aspirations are connected to it all you think about it is beauty and architecture and culture and all this stuff and then they get a bed bug panic absolutely crazy especially before the olympics so let's read the article um actually let's watch a bit of the video actually courtesy here of the bbc let's see what the video is saying on the on board a train in france there's a bed bug crawling on one of the seats there's something underneath the beds as well it looks like or the chairs you can see them everywhere where they usually are found god almighty more again in the chairs and stuff jesus christos some dead some still crawling around but anyway let's read the article and see what it says a plague of bed bugs has hit paris and other french cities provoking a wave of insectophobia and raising questions about health and safety during this year's olympic games or next year sorry um the broadly um that's broadly how the phenomenon has been described in france and international news media in part it's true but in part it's not what is the case of the number of bed bug sightings have increased over the last few weeks and the upward trend of several bugs? Um, every late summer, we see an increase in bed bugs, says Jean Michel Berenger, an etymologist in Marseille. It is because people have been moving about over August and July um, and they bring back their luggage. Each year, the seasonal increase is bigger than the last. So, this has been happening for a while god almighty in paris the long-standing fear of infestation felt by flat dwellers one in ten of whom have experienced bed bugs in the last five years according to the official have been added to new sources um new sources of angst reports of um punasius what is that punasius or punaises um have been recently seen in cinemas that have been proven but are taken seriously um likewise claims that people have been bitten on trains <laughs> can you imagine getting bitten by a bed bug on a train to work shit now both paris city hall and president emmanuel macron um government are calling for action it's a measure of how seriously they take the issue and how they need to protect the image of paris ahead of the 2024 games that they are not dismissing the bed bug panic as a social media inv invention sorry because that is also part of the story scare stories are flashing across the internet so fast that it's, it's turning what once was the newspapers a reliable slow day chestnut into a national emergency cinema owners already worried about the declining attendance are seriously spooked by the video circulating showing unidentified mites on the seat people on metros are having checking their upholstery and some prefer to stand imagine the panic that exists in paris right now people standing everywhere people double checking their seats spraying them and shit 
I guess that lady that everyone was fucking dunking on on social media earlier, the one that goes to hotel rooms and cleans everything. I guess she's not looking so crazy now, huh? Everybody was dunking on her because she's a bit overweight and she's wasting her time cleaning rooms in hotels when she could just stay at home or just take it as it is. Now you see why people do that sort of thing. Once you've been stung, once you've been bit by stuff like bed bugs or affected by it, it's very difficult to not you know to not unsee those things it's kind of part of your psyche like even now talking about it parts of my ears are flipping feeling really itchy and shit um there is a new element this year and that is a general psychosis which has been taken hold says mr beringer is a good thing in a way because it serves to make people aware of the problem and the sooner you act on bed bugs the better but a lot of the problem is being exaggerated so they're trying to obviously stem the flipping you know craziness online but the reality is a reality most people that are seeing the bed bugs are seeing them. They're not seeing things, but obviously they don't want people to go in full blown panic and start fucking burning their neighbors' homes because of fear of catching fucking bed bugs. The fact of the matter is that the bed bugs are making a comeback and have been perhaps in twenty or thirty years, but it's not just in France but everywhere. There are several factors of which globalizations, container trade, tourism, immigration is the most important. Climate change can be ruled out. The bed bug um, sin was it Simex lectorius um, to give it its next latin name is a domesticated creature domesticated bed bugs so is somebody keeping them as pets I'm, i bet there's some sort of freak that actually has bed bugs as like a a thing that they have as a pet I, i'm sure there is it goes it goes um this domestic creature um it goes where humans go whether it doesn't come into it after World War II, bed bugs, like many other beasties, were massively reduced in numbers in the widespread use of DDT. But over the years, DDT and many other chemicals have been banned because of the effects of humans. In the meantime, bed bugs population has been altered uh, by the elimination of those creatures who were genetically susceptible to chemical eradication in the first place. Those that survived DDT blitz are the ancestors of today's breed. <laughs> <laughs> who are results of the farm more restraint a third factor may be the decline in cockroaches thanks largely to the cleaner homes cockroaches are bed bugs predators um fear not though no one's suggesting reinfesting homes with cockroaches in order to deal with the less put imagine that people people actually having cockroaches in their home to deal with bed bugs According to Beringer, in the developed world, people are liable to panic about bed bugs because it's lost on the collective memory of them. In other parts of the world, they are still common and people keep the threat in, pop in proportion. Yeah, it being common is still not something that I would be saying is acceptable and be happy to have. I'm sorry. The truth is that bed bugs are indeed a menace, but the danger is more psychological than physical. Um, Cinemex, Cimex lecturius may be revolting, but as far as it's known, it cannot transmit disease. Its bites are loathsome, but they do not last long. But they're still itchy. They still make you feel gross. Having all these fucking creatures all over you, especially when you're sleeping, it's not the greatest. So these guys are trying to make it seem like it's not a big deal, but it clearly is. But one thing we need to do is that we owe this kid a big apology. Do you remember this kid that went viral over, uh, I think maybe a few months back on social media, this American kid, because he went to Paris and he basically wasn't a fan of Paris overall and said it was disgusting. We owe this guy a big apology because maybe he was onto something. Maybe he was onto something about Paris. Y'all save all y'all money, all y'all lives to come here. Hmm. <laughs> Let me be the one to break your bubble. First of all, Paris stink. It smelled like piss, cheese, and armpit. Child eating the damn pigeons was crazy. And ain't nothing to do but eat at cafes. You will see a cafe on every corner because there's no activities here and the food is so mid. That's why there's <laughs> hella fast food, American fast food chains, because their food don't taste like shit. And that shit look grimy as hell. Paris look grimy as hell in dungeon. Post-apocalyptic, everywhere you go, it was graffiti. The buildings weren't inviting, they weren't welcoming. <laughs> it was actually a horror sight to see. Like, this was shocking to me. They will never show you that this is what Paris really looks like. Mm -hmm. In the Eiffel Tower, child, this was the trail to the Eiffel Dam Tower. This was the most hype shit I've ever seen. Outside of this tower, it ain't shit to do. There's no mom culture. They don't know how to capitalize off their culture. It's just this damn tower. <laughs> it's just this dime tower you say it looks like the middle east people will tell you to go to the Eiffel tower at night because in daytime it looks like rust of course it looks good at the night that's why they stay they say turn the lights off when you when you uh when you're fucking <laughs> but you can't see the person's ugly or not <laughs> you don't learn much about french culture because they don't capitalize off the things that they're known for like mimes 
which is a fucking super ignorant american thing to say the only thing that um, french people are known for are mimes like what um anytime someone says the place looks better at night it's a red flag i understand what he means because i think paris paris is interesting as a city anyway because i said it plenty of times before but it's the only place i've been to so far in the times that i've in the places i've visited around the world again i'm not the you know i have not i'm not the biggest traveler but i have been to a fair amount of good places and it's probably the only place that i can say hands down where your experience of it is highly dependent on who you go with who you know over there and who you know over there basically you really can't have a good first time in paris on your own i don't think it's possible i really don't you kind of have to know a bit about the city, maybe know a couple of people and stuff to really get an appreciation of what Paris is like as a city and like it. I think other places, you can come on your own and just be able to say, yeah, this is shit. Like London is a good example. London, I think, is an easy place to come to and realise and figure out quickly is this, if it's for you or not. You'd be like, you know what? This place is shit. Overrated. Same goes for New York. You could go to New York, visit it and say, you know what? This place is fucking awesome. I love it. But Paris is the only place where, even if you say it's terrible, if you go back a second time, a third time with somebody that actually is actually from there or that, or you know people that live over there, it completely changes your experience and you absolutely fall in love with it. Honestly, I swear to God. So it's got that really weird bit about it, but it's also got a very weird sort of like chic, chicness about it that's also a bit dirty. Like one of the places that I like to visit a lot are on the kind of outer rings, right? Which are kind of like where the hoods are, right? Where it's all like full of kind of the blocks of flats and stuff that you see on all the fucking famous French movies and French TV series and shit. Those places are usually quite fun to hang out with because it's quite quote unquote multicultural. There's loads of good restaurants and shit, great places to go and party, blah, 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 blah. But the center of Paris is also really nice too because it's super bougie. It's a place that you see in, again, in all the flipping um, Hollywood movies. You can walk along the canal and blah, 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 blah. You go to cool bookshops, eat, you know, at nice restaurants, drink cafe and cafe bars and whatnot, sit down and people watch. All those things are quite amazing, but there's parts of Paris that are hidden behind doors, like people's, after, people's you know, after parties, um, certain clubs that you're only allowed to go to if you know certain people, even certain book clubs and readings and presentations and theatres and stuff. It's all kind of like needs to know basis. So it's a hard place to really enjoy on your own as an expat or as a tourist, kind of just figuring stuff out solo. It's very difficult to enjoy and to like it. But it's also very kind of jarring because it kind of reminds me a little bit, I think the guy even said in the video, it's kind of like Middle East, but it's a lot like Central Europe or even Eastern Europe. When you go to parts of Berlin, if, for instance, the city that I kind of love and go to a lot, you're like, oh, this place isn't the greatest. It's even places like um, when I went to Prague one time um, in the Czech Republic, when you just venture a little bit outside of Prague, like five to 10 minutes walk even, you start to see how quickly um, the place starts to resemble any other place that you would imagine visiting in Central to Eastern Europe. Very industrial, loads of um, bricks everywhere, loads of fucking graffiti, like very downtrodden, yeah, very like bleak. As soon as you step out of Prague, the kind of main city where the fucking tourists are in the main, wherever it may be. So I think the same thing happens in Paris, but the Paris kind of juxtaposition of it kind of feels a bit nicer when you go there. But again, it takes a bit of time to get your eyes used to it so big up that kid and i think we owe him a big 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 apology